Hey, and uh, welcome to the animation part of the, this tutorial. Um, what we have here is I've broken out one of the highlights of the main video into its own scene so we can sort of dissect how the animation was created. Uh, so I'm just going to give this a play so you can see it go, uh, see it uh, being revealed through the animation. Basically, we used uh, four different types of animation uh, to reveal the stuff. Uh, the first one being very basic transforms um, on the object level. So translation, rotation, scale on um, very simple, moving them in space over time. Um, the second one being uh, modifiers. So for example, these rafters that sort of bend and the railings that sort of bend down to form the shape of the railings, that's uh, an animated modifier. Um, another one being uh, edit at the editable poly uh, sub-objects level, meaning we animated vertices, edges, faces over time, um, uh, which is another very basic way to animate, and I'll show you how we did that as well. And then finally, the, the most useful uh, form of animation that we found was animating something s as simple as visibility um, gave us a lot of flexibility within the scene and I will also show you that part. Here's the Meridian Center without any animation applied to it. So uh, to demonstrate the first form of animation uh, what I'm going to do is just demonstrate how we would say animate this base coming up from the ground and then this roof coming down from the from the sky. So very simply, um, what I would do is turn on my auto key. I would find on the timeline when to the place that I wanted the roof to actually land on the base and create a key. Um, and then move back and simply move the, the roof out of frame. Very simple. Very simple. Um, the base would be the same way. Um, probably the base would come up just before the roof would hit. So I would say right about there, I'd create a frame and move back a ways and move it below. So when I play it, it just comes together like that. First comes the, the base of the building coming up and then the roof coming down. When it comes to animating uh, modifiers, I'll just show you on this rafter how it's bent over the structure. Now I've already got a bend modifier applied to it and that's what gives it the nice bend over, uh, over the building. And you can see that I've got it uh, set to angle number 70, uh, the, the value of 72. Uh, bent in the x-axis and basically what I would do um, to animate that would be the same uh, concept as with the roof and the base. I would select a frame that um, I want to uh, have the animation end at. Now uh, one thing you want to check with this part of the animation is open your filters, your key filters here at the bottom and this is what's going to uh, determine which parts of the object will have a key created. So open that up and just make sure that you've got modifiers selected here so that when you do create a frame, um, you can, it will actually create one for the modifier. Now, if you wanna get really, um, really clean and organized, you can remove these guys so you won't have any position, rotation, or scale. Um, however, that might not be such a great idea because we will be also animating the position. So um, for that reason, I will keep it on. Um, but for other, just just for an FYI for other uh, situations, you might want to know that that's a good thing to do. So we've got the modifier selected there. And I'm just going to create a key. Same thing. And then move it back a little ways. And I'm going to change that angle to like minus 70. And you'll see that it's flipped the other way. And it's basically just animated like that. Um, now I'm also going to move the position. So like I said, um, we will go to this frame. And I'm just going to toggle this so that it goes to the right frame. And I just wanted to see where it was. And I'm going to move this back to there and move it up. Oops. 
that's not good. There we go. Got to make sure that you've got the actual object selected when you move it up. So now that we've got the bend modifier animated on the rafter structure, uh, don't forget that you can go in and start adjusting your key, uh, your keyframes for timing or values. Uh, one area that you can do it is here underneath the timeline um, where I'm scrolling right now you can see that there's a timeline with numbers and these represent all your frames and you can actually just grab uh, the frames and then move them around just like so um, you can also grab a bunch of frames and you can see when you grab more than one that this bar appears below this means you can actually grab them and scale them, which is super handy. So if I wanted to just speed everything up on that one object, I can actually just take it and grab it and it's going to scale. You can see all of the frames sort of moving in proportion to that last frame there. So that's a really handy uh, thing to know. Another way is through the graph editor, um, sorry, the curve editor. So if I right click on the object, I should be able to get right here, it'll say Curve Editor or Dope Sheet. I usually work in the Curve Editor, so I'll show you that one. Um, it's a great way to edit your keys. Another way that you can open it is up on the bar here, uh, right there, that icon with the little curve on it. That's the Curve Editor. Now, when you're in the Curve Editor, uh, you can see I've got what I've got selected in the window, which is the, the, um, the structure that I've named Meridian Mesh Randomly 104. Um, it's also named here, and this is what I've got selected. Um, we animated it in the, in the z-axis, so you can see there's frame one, there's frame two. Um, I can select the frames here and just same way as below, um, I can just manually move it around. And if I do that, I'm moving it in time as well as value. So just be careful with that because you can really mess up your scene if you're not careful with what you're changing. A more precise way to change that keyframe would be by selecting it, right click, oops, uh, right click and a window will come up like this and what you can do is um, you can it, it's going to tell you which keyframe you're on which is keyframe number two if I go back one you'll see that number one gets highlighted so you can go through and edit your keys that way uh, now if I here's my time and my value so I can change the time and you can see it's moving in the curve editor and it's also responding in the viewport so you can see exactly what you're doing uh, same thing with the value. So, you know, you can you can really see how everything's responding right away as, as I'm changing that value of the key. So a couple ways to, to change things up there. And also um, these, these buttons down here, um, you can actually uh, change the, the, the interpolation of the key. So it's defaulting on Bezier, which um, we learned earlier about the handles and how you can move things around that way. Um, or you can change it this to smooth or linear steps. Um, this is ease in, or sorry, yeah, ease in and ease out, and um, other Bezier options. So uh, play around with those, and you'll be able to see, you know, uh, all the different options that you have for that. So let's move on to sub-object animation. Um, so I've created a, a regular polygon box to just demonstrate this uh, technique of animation. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, in the modifier list, um, I have to convert this to an editable poly in order to uh, access the, um, the actual sub-object level. So if you right click on here, um, convert it to an editable poly, and then you've got all of your sub-object selections. Now the problem with this is even though I can select things and move them around, you actually can't animate at this level. What we have to do is add another modifier on top of the editable poly, which sounds redundant, but we have to create an edit poly modifier. So go into your list, select edit poly. Um, the next thing that we have to do, let's turn on our auto key. And this is the trick, you have to select animate. Otherwise, whatever you do in this, um, in this modifier is not going to animate unless you select that. So once we've got that, let's just move some points around. So I'm just going to move these guys down, move the timeline, 
I'm going to move these vertices up and now we should see some, yep, yeah, there we go, some animation. So there you go, a uh, really simple uh, way to sort of animate vertices, faces, borders, elements, um, all the different sub-objects of, of a polygon. Now the trick about this is uh, there's, a, there's a catch. You can only animate one group of selection. So uh, for example, I cannot cr grab another, I don't know, I can't go to face mode and select a face and then animate that in, this, in the same stack. Um, in the same modifier. So um, if I want to do another selection of sub objects, I will have to create another edit poly on top of that, make my selection and make sure this is on animate as well. And then what I can do is move that guy around as well. So there you go. So first the vertices are going up and then the face should come in. So when it comes to animating visibility, there's um, a few different ways that we can do it. Uh, what I have here is, a, is just your regular teapot model that I'm just going to demonstrate a couple ways that you can animate visibility. So animating the object fading in and fading out. So one thing you should note about visibility animation is that in order for it to work on any kind of object, there needs to be some form of animation applied to it. So I'm just going to quickly add a couple keys to this uh, teapot just to make sure that the visibility animation will actually work. So there we go. The second step is I'm going to right click on the teapot and hit object properties. And this is the value right here under render control visibility. This value right here is what I'm going to be animating. Now I've got the auto key assigned uh, already turned on. So I'm just going to change that value to zero and select OK. And now you'll see that it's created a keyframe and the teapot is has a value of zero for visibility. Now when I move the timeline over here, I right click on the teapot because I still have it selected. Bring up the object properties again and I will change the visibility value to one. Hit OK and now it's reappeared again. Now uh, I just want to point out one thing within this object properties. If you're animating and sometimes the these values are grayed out just like so, um, it means that the object is being controlled through the layer properties. So you want to be able to um, edit the object at the object level. So make sure that these two buttons are set to by object so that your animation will actually be applied to the object and you can access all these values. So as you can see, now we've got a really nice uh, visibility animation on this teapot. So the next thing that I just want to quickly show you is in the curve editor, I'm just going to scroll down to this object, which is teapot01. Um, you'll notice that in the curve editor, there has been a channel applied just for visibility. And in, in the curve editor, if you go to edit visibility track, you can add and remove the visibility track, it's, which is another way that you can animate your visibility. Um, which is really a simple way of doing it if you know that you're just going to be turning things on and off. It's a, it's a great way to come in and edit these keys. So when you're in here, you can also um, change the, I've, I've just selected the key and right clicked. And once again, I can go in and I can uh, change the interpolation and the value and the time. So if I wanted it to be a step animation, meaning that I just want the object to turn on and off, just like that, not a gradual fade in and fade out. Um, you can easily do that here in the curve editor. I'm just going to switch that back to a bezier. So there we go. Now we've now we're back to having a gradual fade in uh, for the visibility. So that's a great way to uh, have more control over your pop-in animations um, so that you don't have these random floating objects in your scene. It's really simple to apply this visibility track and control when these objects are turned on and off in your rendering. 
So now we've gone over all the animation, the type of animations that we did in the video. Now we're going to move on to camera animation.